Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to take some visits around the country uh, to different uh, teams who have, have, have quarterback issues. Uh, they, need, they need a quarterback. That's the issue. Uh, whether they need to re-sign someone, whether they need to acquire someone, because any team that's got a quarterback desire is certainly going to have their eye on that number two pick. Of course, Washington has its own, but... If the price is right, someone gets super desperate. Who knows? So let's kind of feel out these situations. Uh, We did it last week on Radio Row in Indianapolis with Q Myers from Las Vegas. Raiders have the 13th pick in the draft. At number 11, it's the Minnesota Vikings who have a familiar face. They've got to also figure out in Kirk Cousins. Uh, And that is today's Not My Beat. Today's top story from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. Matthew Collar covers the Vikings for 1500 ESPN up in Minnesota. Matthew, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. What's going on? Uh, just trying to figure out quarterback, something we've been doing in this town for, well, they've been doing it longer than I've been here, that's for sure. Um, and the most we've had it figured out is that Cousins fellow that you've you've gotten to know over the last couple of years. Um, I, I saw your colleague up at ESPN who you did a podcast with, I think today, on Kevin Seifert, uh, just dropped a story on ESPN.com basically saying like he thinks the time is up for Minnesota and Cousins, that they both would like a reunion, but the market uh, or, or other factors might get in the way. How do you see Cousins, the likelihood of Cousins re-signing in Minnesota? Let's start there. Yeah, it seems to be by the day. There's more and more evidence that he will not be coming back. And I came back from the NFL Combine at Indianapolis feeling very much like you could start printing Kirk Cousins' Atlanta Falcons jerseys. I mean, every person that I talked to, whether it was uh, in the league or other media, everybody just believed he was going to be an Atlanta Falcon. And It makes so much sense. I mean, they're a team with an 81-year-old owner who hasn't made the playoffs since 2017. They've got a bunch of weapons that they've drafted and an offensive coordinator who runs a similar system to Kevin O'Connell. I mean, it all kind of comes together. And also, you have to ask, well, who's desperate enough to pay Kirk? And I don't think the Vikings are that team uh, because when you look at the totality of the Vikings roster, they need about 10 starters, much less backups, much less filling out you know, depth and so forth, just starters because half their roster is a free agent right now. And how exactly are you going to sign Kirk Cousins to a huge deal and then be able to fill that many spots and, and be a contender? And even if you look at the last few years of teams, their rosters were better than the one they're going to be able to build through free agency, especially with every good player getting franchise tagged even if they had endless cap space, there's just not enough free agents to build a great team. So they need to take a slower approach. They need to build through the draft. They need to develop players that they've drafted recently. And that doesn't really scream to me, oh yeah, bring back a 36-year-old quarterback who is coming off an Achilles injury. That's usually something you do when you are in desperation win-now mode. So I think the Vikings like Kirk Cousins so much that – They want to be respectful of him. They want to say, we like you. We're going to give you an offer. And if he came back, I guess they would probably change their plans and and try to go all in and win. But uh, I don't think it's ever really made sense with their timeline and where they stand right now for him to return. So what does that mean then? You know, obviously, I I mean, personally, transparently, like I'm very interested in what that means for O'Connell because I covered Kevin when I was still on the beat here. Um, and I, I think he's a really good coach. Like I, I think one of the biggest mistakes of uh, the previous regime was letting him go. Um, I also honestly think that, you know, they probably been a year or two early. I think the, the experience in LA helped Kevin a lot, be as successful as he has been in Minnesota, but I think he should have been a head coaching candidate here instead of Ron Rivera four years ago, five years ago. So who knows? Um, but what does that mean for that regime up there that has had some winning? And I feel like sometimes winning early, if you then have to reset things, can be the worst thing possible for a coach and, and a general manager. You are 100% right when it comes to you get here, you win 13 games, then you want to do it again. And even if that's not what the roster was going to be capable of, I mean, I think we all know that 2022 season – was just a charmed life, but also they had a ton of older players. Like I saw Eric Hendricks just got released by the Chargers. He was a key player in his 30s. And Zadarius Smith and Patrick Peterson and Adam Thielen, those guys were not going to continue into the future 
to play at that same level. So the Vikings did what was smart and they did a reset and they actually had a lot of players that took over for those guys, step into those, you know, those roles and perform pretty well. Like uh, Ivan Pace Jr. became one of the best stories last year, undrafted and, and a, an above average starter. Josh Metellus went from a special teamer to a quality player. So their plan was actually in the midst of working, which was getting rid of kind of the older guys, refreshing the roster. And then Kirk's Achilles popped. And it uh, turns out Josh Dobbs was uh, not good enough to take them to the playoffs, but maybe just have kind of one or two memorable games. And when you finish 7-10, and 10, it doesn't really matter how you got there. There's going to be pressure on the head coach. Personally, I think that the ownership just needs to remove themselves from fire a coach mode and be patient with this thing. Like, don't be like every NFL team that, you know, when you have two bad seasons in a row, you have to fire somebody. I think they need to give Kevin O'Connell and their GM, Kwesi Dafalmensa, time to rebuild this roster around a young quarterback that is handpicked by Kevin O'Connell in this draft and go forward that way. And that's the best chance of possibly succeeding. But <laughs> that's easier to say now in March than it is when you are three and seven or something, right? And then you start feeling the pressure. But I really think if there's a situation that's tailor made for a team and a coach, to rebuild slowly over a year or two years, it's probably this team right now. I mean, because they just don't have enough to really compete in that division that all of a sudden looks stacked. Right. And if you're going to fire Kevin O'Connell, you'd want like a young quarterback whisperer type. You'd want Kevin O'Connell. Uh, Matthew right. Collar, Vikings insider for 1500 ESPN is with us here on the Hoffman Show. So that means you need the young quarterback do you think the Vikings will be calling Washington, New England to get to the top of this draft? And if so, do you, do you have any early feel on who they might be targeting? Oh, I promise you they'll be calling. There's no question about it. Uh, if uh, assuming Kirk Cousins leaves now, whether they're taking that phone call and the Vikings could put together a big enough offer to move Washington or New England off of those quarterbacks that I really, really question. I mean, a lot of times with this, we talk about a million different scenarios. We get to draft night, and the thing we expected to happen happens. And that was last year. The Vikings tried to make calls up to get Anthony Richardson, and the Colts were like, nope, we didn't tank for nothing, buddy. And, uh, you know, they just drafted the guy they wanted. And I think Washington should do the same thing. Like, just draft Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whoever you like better and then rebuild there, that's the problem the Vikings face is that the teams in the top three all are in a spot where they want to draft those quarterbacks. And I don't know that there's enough the Vikings could give up without completely going all, you know, Ricky Williams, trade your whole draft type of move in order for Washington to say, yes, is three firsts enough? Like, I, I don't even know that it is um, because you're talking about quarterbacks that could be, the franchise guy for a long time that, as you mentioned, uh, Washington has had a tad bit of trouble pinning down. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that they're going to make every phone call. That's why you're hearing rumors of, well, that you know, they might be interested in Trey Lance or Justin Fields or whatever. I think that they're looking at every single option for quarterback and definitely trading up is going to be one of them. So is there a particular one that you like? Because those, those are the shows we do these types of years. Like, this is where I'm at today, and we'll see about tomorrow. But whether it's going after a guy like Fields in the division, which I'm sure the Bears would just absolutely love to do, um, you know, whether it's Fields, whether it's another another name, free agent-wise, on the cheap, a guy like Russell Wilson, because he's getting paid bukus from Denver, or one of these young guys, um, is there... Is there a particular direction that, that you think is the best option as we sit here on Tuesday, March 5th? Yeah, I think uh, when Kevin O'Connell goes to sleep at night, he has visions of Drake May being his franchise quarterback. I just, you look at the size, the velocity on the football, how he throws the ball over the middle of the field, how he throws deep. And also, you know, he does some wild stuff if you watch his games, but he just, he reminds me of Matthew Stafford. I mean, just this big giant dude with a huge arm, and a, kind of a wily playmaking nature to him that I think Kevin O'Connell would really love to shape that into his franchise quarterback. And the one thing also that for the Vikings, you can give a rookie Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, and that's pretty good. I mean, because when we go back to like Sam Darnold, he's throwing to Robbie Anderson and Jamison Crowder as like his top receivers for the New York Jets. 
if you want a rookie to have a chance to succeed and do something special, a lot of times you're going to have to build the supporting cast. And the Vikings already have it with these two great receivers. And you mentioned O'Connell and, and being kind of a quarterback whisperer type of coach where we saw with Kirk Cousins how that relationship built over two years together and molded the offense around Kirk Cousins. If you had somebody with the tools of Drake May and the playmaking to add on top of it, which we know that Kirk Cousins does not have, you could really have something special if, if he hits. So I think that if there was a guy they were going to give three first to, to move up and get, it would be Drake May. Interesting, because I, I think that they're, I think Denver might be in the same boat. I think uh, Vegas wants to move up for Daniels. So we'll see if either of these, these picks move. What's the situation with JJ contractually, um, you know, Viking or uh, receivers typically don't have the most patience ever. Um, so if all of a sudden he's dealing with a rookie quarterback, how, how does that, that locker room and react to it? Especially some of the guys like Justin Jefferson, who, who first couple of years, he's like, this is awesome. We win and we're going to compete for championships. And all of a sudden the trend might be going the other direction. Yeah, I think, um, with Justin Jefferson, I, I just want to tell everybody to take a deep breath. Just just relax. Uh, Nick Bosa did not sign his contract until, I believe, September 9th last year. And that might be what we're in for with Justin Jefferson. Deadlines make deals in the NFL for a reason. I do know the, NF, uh, the Vikings were very, very unhappy about any suggestion that Justin Jefferson could get traded. And I believe that to be fully legit because... <laughs> Why would you do that? That would be one of the, they already have a Randy Moss and a Herschel Walker trade in their past. What do you want another one? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that, I don't think you could get Kevin O'Connell to trade Justin Jefferson for anything short of Mahomes or Josh Allen. I think that's how much he sees him as a reason someday they can win the Super Bowl and they'll get it worked out. I mean, they were at least close last year. They, the fact that they even negotiated last year is unusual because normally players who are first rounders don't negotiate until before their fifth year option year. That just speaks to how much the Vikings want to get a deal done with him. And from Jefferson's perspective, look, look at all the guys being franchise tagged today. Uh, if you're a player and you're a first round pick, do you really have control over where you go? Because if Jefferson wants to try to hit free agency someday, he's got to go through his fifth-year option and two franchise tags. Uh, what is that? Are we at 2027 before he could actually do that? I mean, come on. It's much better for him to sign an extension, allow the team to play a little, you know, fun games with the salary cap to allow them to sign other players around him and so forth, and then, you know, build around him. I mean, that just it all makes sense. I think that we just love to try to make that happen. Uh, you know, the, the trade and the trade rumors and those freaks who put people in other jerseys and stuff because they're not real artists or whatever. So I, I don't know. Like, I think it was kind of a social media invention that there was any chance he was going to be traded or not signed. Yeah, that or we all we all know how the uh, the subterfuge works at, at the combine. And, and it, when NFL people get together, it's other teams being like, yeah, you know, I heard this or an agent being like, I heard this because <laughs> yeah. they're trying to trying to get a, a rumor mill started to see what they can dig up. Uh, Matthew Collar is with us from 1500 ESPN up in the Twin Cities uh, covering the Vikings. Um, let's wrap with this, Matthew, um, to, to go full circle here. If Cousins leaves, what's the Cousins legacy in Minnesota? Uh, might depend on who you ask. Uh, did he fail them? Did they fail him? Was it destined to fail anyway? The key word there is fail. So it is a complete and utter failure. Um, when you spend the most money ever guaranteed on a player and he wins one playoff game, you as an organization failed. I mean, I think that the Vikings got the best possible version of Kirk Cousins they ever could have dreamed of. He put up better statistics here. And if you go back and watch the Washington games, he played better football here uh, in, a, in a lot of ways and became a better quarterback. And yet with the contract, with his shortcomings as a quarterback, it was never enough. And so whether you want to blame the coaches, the GMs for not building the teams good enough, uh, you know, circumstances, whatever it might be, it didn't work. You can't, you can't sign that contract with a team coming off an NFC championship and win one playoff game in six years and tell me that it was fine. It wasn't. So, you know, I, I look at it as they had a fork in the road in 2018 and they took the, the wrong route. 
and it got Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman fired, and it set them back from drafting a bunch of quarterbacks who turned out to be really good around the NFL, mostly in the AFC. Uh, but, you know, and I also think that when we talk about, you know, the team around him and everything else, he couldn't have asked for a lot more when he got there and then to have Justin Jefferson show up to win zero playoff games with Justin Jefferson on his entire rookie contract. It's just, it's just an abject failure and there's no other way to put it. And that's why any discussion about bringing him back is like, no, <laughs> like based on what? Would you do that? Um, so, yeah, I mean, you never know. I don't want to call it before it's official, but uh, that's kind of why I look at it as why would there be any reason to continue down this road that has never gotten them close outside of winning 13 games and then losing to a terrible Giants team in the first round? Um, that sounds a lot like some of the frustration after he left here. Um, that all sounds very familiar. And then, you know, you wind up in the quarterback desert and you're like, damn it, I wish you'd just bring him back and try it again. Yeah. It is... It's a weird quarterback in the NFL is hard as hell, man. And that is, that is the nature of it. But everything you said, totally true. Um, also correction, uh, Isle Hoffman here, uh, Matthew Collar, formerly of 1500 ESPN up in Minnesota now writes for purple insider, also host of their podcast where you can listen to his conversation on cousins and the Vikings with Kevin Seifer from ESPN, uh, their latest episode. So Matthew apologies for the, uh, the outlet mix up there. Uh, but happy to have you on. You were fantastic. And, and as there's more Viking news that uh, perhaps is relevant here to DC, we'd love to have you back. Yep. 1500 ESPN no longer exists. So, um, Oh, that is so but, sad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's how purple insider got started was, uh, during the pandemic, 1500 was shut down by the people who owned it. So I started hmm. my own thing, but, uh, you know, not offended. I love my time there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's uh, a legacy, right? It's like, if you're a radio dork like me, like that's one of the stations you know about. And I guess I, in the pandemic, I left radio for a little bit and I came back and I, I guess I missed that story. Damn. That's depressing. Well, that's fun, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out great. No, honestly, truly, it's worked out great. Like to go independent, do the podcast thing and everything else. So, um, so I'm I'm fine. It's been wonderful, actually. Oh, that's great. Well, I, you know, I hope my boss isn't listening and thinking that I'm getting any ideas. Uh, <laughs> Matthew, thanks so much for the time, man. Uh, this your insight was really great, really valuable. Uh, good, continued success, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, Matthew Collar, uh, Purple Insider is the website in the podcast uh, where you can check out all of his work. Uh, when we get back here, uh, actually, Anthony, let's uh, let's do this. Let's you and I talk about Cousins real quick um, because we don't have time to go to a break and come back uh, and then have an, an actual segment. Uh, and then Linnell is going to join us coming up at the bottom of the hour. So um, the Cousins thing at the end, if, you, if, if we want to have our, uh, our digital department, have our guy Lou write something up, Cousins failure, that, uh, that'll get some clicks. That'll get some headlines. But it is this thing where, like, I understand what he's saying. But at the same time, like, Cousins, before he popped his Achilles, was playing like a top 10 quarterback last year. And this is the, this is the problem, is it's so freaking hard to get good quarterback play and then you have to ask the question, and this is like where I think it gets a little twisted. How much is good quarterback play actually worth in the NFL? Because unless it's Mahomes level, it's hard to guarantee anything. If you're Pat Mahomes, you're going to the freaking Super Bowl. But outside of him and a couple of stretches of Brady's career, you don't get that level of quarterback play that often. And it, it, it is a league where parity has ruled out in part because it's one game playoffs and weird stuff happens in the playoffs. Um, but even like, you know, Peyton Manning only, only won two rings. He was about like, he and Brady were going back and forth for the best in the sport forever. Josh Allen's incredible. I take Josh Allen tomorrow. But what he, what has he done? Only so much. Like, this is the nature of it. And for, like, Cousins has had stretches where he plays as a borderline top five quarterback for four, five, six, seven, eight games um, in Washington and in Minnesota. But I would say he, he probably averages out somewhere around the bottom of the top 10 or just outside of it. And what is that worth? Because if you don't have one, it's, it feels like it's worth everything. And if you have one and it only gets you one playoff win in three years, then you're like, well, I don't. I'm not paying for that. It's funny. Uh, 
we're we're having this conversation literally on the heels of you know Russell Wilson um getting cut from the the Broncos or be, about to be released from the Broncos because they sacrificed so much to you know bring him in yeah and the fact that me personally I think Russell Wilson played good last year but yeah at the 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 amount of money that they paid him he didn't necessarily live up to you know that contract so it's it's sort of kind of that situation is unfair to uh, to Russell Wilson because of what was surrounding him. But well, Kirk Cousins, man, he he had some some pieces around him, and he just couldn't get over the hump. So, well, like, is it Kirk's fault that two years ago they had the worst defense in the league? No, not, right not at all. Like, and that's that's the that's the 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 bitch of it is this year. Brian Flores comes in, does a great job as the DC, turns that defense around, takes oh. him a little while. By the time he turns it around, Kirk's Achilles pops. Yeah, like it's such a silly league. <laughs> like it just is a dumb league where dumb stuff happens and then Pat Mahomes wins the Super Bowl. That's what it feels like sometimes. Yeah, I just I just feel like a lot of the pressure gets put on the quarterback. And for sure, to be honest, I, I think it should because they're they're the ones that's out there getting paid so much. And the Vikings, they're the first team to like really show the you know back Kirk Cousins like to really put their faith in him. The command, I mean the you know the the former Washington team. Uh, they didn't necessarily do that. They kept franchise tagging them. So, you know, for the, the Vikings to go out there, put their face in them, they really wanted, you know, results. And, you know, I think I think Kurt sort of kind of came up a little short Yeah. Um, in those big playoff moments. But I think a lot of the, the pressure is more so on the quarterback. They're not going to look at anything else. I think that's totally true. And I think it begs the question that I asked. I don't remember it was last offseason when we were talking about quarterbacks because we wound up doing this every year. But it might have been two <laughs> years ago when they traded for Carson. And I was like, I think it was when they traded for Wentz. And I was like, are you better off getting, if you're paying Wentz, was it 28? I think that he was getting paid that year. Mm -hmm. Are you better off paying Carson Wentz 28 and getting $18 million worth of quarterback play? Now they got about negative 20 um, because Wentz was awful. But at the time, we didn't know that was going to happen. But I was like, that's not a $28 million quarterback, right? So are you better off? getting 15, 16 million dollars worth of quarterback play, whatever that means, out of a 28 million dollar quarterback or 10 million dollars worth out of a 10 million dollar quarterback. And that to me is the question. Like from a value standpoint, why Mahomes works is because you get your money's worth even though you pay him more than everybody else in the sport. Allen gets you close. He gets you in the games. He gives you a chance. Burrow, same thing. Like those, those guys are going to be worth it. And this is going to be the question with a guy like Justin Herbert. Herbert's awesome. Every team should want Justin Herbert. But if he doesn't give the Chargers 200 whatever million dollars with the quarterback play over the next five years, he ain't worth it. Nope. Kyler Murray is an incredibly talented quarterback. He ain't worth that contract. Because of what it does, I know the salary cap is super fungible, but because of what it does to everything else on your roster. It's the Hoffman Show. We're on the Team 980. We're always live as well on the free Odyssey app when we are streaming live on YouTube at the team 980 and we're gonna do something a little different next it's overreaction Tuesday and we're actually gonna do it on a Tuesday uh Linnell joins us we're gonna FaceTime Linnell seriously next on the Hoffman show hey this is DA and you're listening to the Hoffman show on the team 980 and the Odyssey app.